it imprints in the nervous system of the brain uh, pathways and uh, neuronal structures that sometimes are premature to the slow, healthy stages of growth and development which we seek for with children as they mature. And if they're imprinted early, they become motivated and fascinated to indulge in sexual things. There's a couple images that stuck in my mind. I was just like, I'd just be sitting there and all of a sudden it'd pop up in my mind. I'd be like, well, why am I thinking about that? I think even like seeing it once can just, you know, just you know, hurt you so much, you know? Seeing a little picture can just put all these things in your mind, you know? This is horrible. It's like getting heroin for the first time, you know, you just want it again and again and again. We know, for example, that a person's brain does not mature until uh, almost 20, 25 years old. And the part of the brain that deals with moral behavior, the cerebral cortex, is vital to understanding how a person decides what is right and what is wrong. I think one of the cruelest and most distorting messages that the pornography industry gives people of all ages is that pornography will aid them in becoming sexually confident, sexually aware, and be better able to relate to a partner. I could not disagree with that more because I see that the opposite occurring in the lives of those that I see in my office. And what happens is someone that is involved in pornography for, for a long period of time, they literally become handicapped in their ability to relate on an emotional, spiritual, and physical level with someone of the opposite sex. Pornography shaped my, like, my want for sex and what I wanted to do whenever I started having sex, big time. It wasn't just like, you know, oh, I want to have a relationship with this girl and have sex with her. It was like, I just want to have sex with as many as I can. And then, you know, sex was pretty meaningless, you know what I mean? I just wanted to do what they did on the porn, so. Um, were the girls in real life like the girls in pornography? No, ma'am. The girls in real life are nothing like the girls in pornography. I mean, they got, they got something that's making them want to do all the stuff they do because I've never had a girl want to do the stuff that these, these women do. And the way they act, it's just, the girls are not the same at all. It's real, it's very fake. Did that disappoint you? In a, in a way, it did kind of disappoint me because um, the way girls act in, you know, in a porno is, you know, hot. <laughs> um, and then whenever you get with a real girl and she doesn't act that way, it makes you think you're doing something wrong, and it makes you feel kind of unmanly, I guess I'd say. So, yeah, it, it kind of lowers your self-esteem. The guys did expect me to act out like that because, you know, I would watch it with them. And then, you know, the guys' expectations run big, and, well, they did with me. Pretty much kind of destroyed our lives because we depended on it. And it just broke friendships, it broke like relationships, it broke like respect for ourselves and our respect for others. There's a fear, there's an insecurity that because their bodies don't look like the porn stars, that there's something wrong with them. The little girls' brains are being altered in the same way that the little boy brains are being altered. And we're seeing increasing numbers of women engaging in child sexual abuse and little girls sexually abusing other children as well, including their siblings. They're imitating what they see. Children are doing what children are supposed to do. The children are supposed to imitate what the adult society says is, is good for important women and men. We show them those pictures. We show them those acts. They will do that because that's what children are supposed to do. Does it destroy them? Yes, it does. Is it their fault? No, it's our fault. It does make them curious because, you know, they say, okay, well, I'm watching it. Just like a little girl when she watches Cinderella, you know, she wants to be just like her. And the kids that watch porn, they want to be just like them. Pornography, uh, like most addictions, 
drugs, alcohol, etc., shuts down the prefrontal cortex. Otherwise, the prefrontal cortex would go crazy from all the anxiety from this behavior that's wrong. And so in the more basilar parts of the brain, showed here by these prominent red uh, imagery, takes over and runs the brain. And then there is a loss of free agency because it demands a repetition of the experience over and over again. It meets the criteria of an addiction. Number one, they can't do without it. It requires a repetition of the experience and the person loses will over the selectivity of the behavior. And I realized I was addicted because if I didn't watch porn like one night, I wouldn't go to sleep because I'd want it so much. So I just watched porn every night and then that would make me go to sleep. I didn't even like it anymore. You could pretty much get a sample of all the porn out there for free. You may not get the full extent of it, but they will get the full extent of you because when, when you watch the sample, you'll be like, I need, I want to watch the rest of it. It wasn't long enough. So you want to use your money or steal someone's money, do whatever you can just to see it. The imprinting can become at times so strong that the individual uh, can never gain satisfaction by giving. They always want to be taking. And it's never satisfying as it was perhaps at one time along the way because it requires more and more of the stimulus to keep up with their uh, sexual desires. 